On day one, I was flying toward the ground in a meteor. It got faster and faster until finally I crash landed in a city. Oh, gross. I'm just a pile of goo. No, wait. I'm Venom. I knew I wasn't going to be able to survive 100 days without a host, so I needed to find someone or something quick. It was time to embrace the dark side and truly become the symbiote. I looked around the city I had landed in. Whoa, these buildings are huge. I was admiring all the buildings when all of a sudden I was attacked by a mean stray dog. I knew I couldn't beat him, not being a puddle of goo with only three hearts, so I hurried and squirmed down a drain. Phew, that was close. The drain led me down into the sewer. I explored down a tunnel before I found a little corner. It seemed safe enough, so I went to sleep for the night. What a way to spend the first night on a new planet. On day two, I woke up with a headache. Wait, I don't even have a brain. How could I have a headache? I shrugged and started up out of the drain to the same alleyway where I had landed. I looked around and saw the stray dog was gone. I went squirming around and figured if I could climb up the pipes, then I must be able to climb up the walls too. I started going up a building when I noticed an open window. Oh, maybe I can hide in there. I crawled in and saw that it was an apartment. Nobody seemed to be around, so I made myself at home. I smelled food, so I tried to open the fridge, but it wouldn't budge. I guess I wasn't strong enough to open doors yet. My whole being grumbled. My hunger meter was dangerously low. I knew I needed food, so I kept looking around. But then I heard a noise. I tried to freeze, but then I felt something hit me. Ouch! I dodged and realized someone was attacking me. Hey, stop that! He swung again. That's it, pal. Time for you to see what a puddle can do. I used the one ability I had, morphing. Hey, get off of me! I climbed up and morphed into him, getting absorbed into his body. Hey, where'd you go? I decided I should probably stay inside this guy until I could find some more food. Maybe he could take me to get some. The guy looked around and shrugged. I guess he assumed I was gone. He went back to sleep for the rest of the day, leaving me starving. On day three, the guy I had morphed into got up and made himself some breakfast. He was able to open the fridge. He had some fruit and it was fine, but I didn't really like it. I wanted something else. Something meatier. He went downstairs and he got onto his motorcycle. He even morphed inside of him. It was really loud. Maybe he would take me to get some better food, though. We went to the park with some benches and a pond, and he threw bread at some ducks. I couldn't handle it anymore. I was so hungry at this point, I decided to tell him what I needed. Brains! He panicked, not knowing it was me talking. I. Need. Brains! Stop it, Eddie. You're not hallucinating. You don't have time for this. Okay, so it seems like this guy's name was Eddie. Perfect. Of course we had time for it. I was hungry. Eddie, I need brains now. I started to wiggle, which made Eddie move. Maybe I could control him. Hey, what's going on? Help. A police officer was nearby and he came running towards us. Oh no, I didn't want him to hurt us, but maybe if I could have his brain. The man got to us and I used Eddie to smack him. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's happening. The police officer started yelling for backup. Oh no, no, we gotta go. No, we need brains. Eddie started to run away. I wasn't strong enough yet, so I couldn't make him stop. What are you doing? I'm starving. Yeah, well, we don't eat brains. Oh, I'm talking to myself. We got back to Eddie's apartment where he soon fell asleep. I would have to try something else tomorrow. On days four to five, I woke Eddie up. Come on, it's time to eat. I tried with all my strength to get him up and somehow managed to get his legs moving a little bit. What in the world? Eddie, stop resisting me. I need food and you need to get it for me. Whoa, wait, you're not just in my head? No, I'm Venom. Or as you remember, the little black puddle you tried to beat with the newspaper. He started to go toward the fridge. I want brains, no more fruit. I told you, I don't eat brains. But I do. I started to get really angry. My hunger meter was so low, I was on the brink of dying. And Eddie didn't even care. I needed to get food. And fast. I reached out using all of my strength and manifested my true form. We are Venom. And we are getting some food. And with that, I jumped through the window. On day six through eight, I fell down into the alleyway near the stray dog I saw earlier. Maybe I could eat his brain. He saw us and ran away, though. No, no brains. Eddie was talking to me, but I was in control of our body now. I'm going to die if I don't get some food soon. Don't don't you care about me, Eddie? I don't even know you. I started down the alleyway, keeping an eye out for anything that looked tasty. Like I said, I am Venom, or now we are Venom. I need a host in order to thrive, and you are perfect, Eddie. Well, not perfect, but we are a good match. I ran up the side of the building and onto the rooftop. It looked like even as Eddie, I still had my same power. I ran across some buildings and up some taller ones. Eventually, we got to the edge of the water. All of a sudden, I saw what looked like a guy attacking a woman. She screamed out for help. Without thinking, I charged forward and grabbed the man. Then I realized he wasn't a man. He was a, oh, it's a zombie. I didn't know what a zombie was doing in the city, but it looked tasty. I defeated him and quickly ate some of the meat he left behind. Gross, Venom. That was a zombie. Mm, yes, he tasted interesting. I realized that the woman was standing there, staring at us. We are Venom. Are you okay? She nodded. Yes. Was that really a zombie? Uh, yes. Yes, it was. He probably would have eaten my brain if you hadn't come along. Zombies eat brains too? We might be friends. The woman started to tremble. She looked really scared. You're scaring her, Venom. But not your brain. You are nice to us. She nodded again. 
Venom, let me talk to her. I let Eddie take control, and he walked up to the girl. I'm Eddie Brock. I'm a reporter. Did you see where that zombie came from? She pointed down the alleyway towards an abandoned building. I was walking down the street when I saw the guy outside. I started walking faster, but then he followed me down the alleyway. Do you think there are more of them? I don't know, but we will find out. Eddie started to walk us toward the building when the woman called out from behind us. Wait, I'm Ann. If you need help, call me. She gave us her number. I like her. Shut up. Excuse me? No, sorry, not you. Oh, okay. She walked quickly down the alleyway and out of sight. I like her. So you said. Well, I guess I'm stuck with you. Want to go see what's up? Oh, yes. As long as I get to eat. On days 9 to 10, Eddie started to sneak toward the abandoned building. Hey, I want to come out. Venom, you're great and all, but you're kind of big. What do you mean? I mean a minute ago, when you took form. You were only slightly bigger than me, but that's still something. Just wait until I take my true form. Huh? What? What? Never mind. I think I see a window we can sneak in. Eddie crept toward the window and looked inside. There didn't seem to be anyone there, or and it was open, so we slipped inside. We continued through the room and towards the next door. Eddie opened it and we looked through. Still nothing. Just a dark hallway. Eddie didn't move. What are you waiting for? It's dark. I don't know if there's anything down there. We forced Eddie to walk forward and he did. We went down the hallway and saw another door at the end. This one had a bigger lock on it. You don't by chance pick locks, do you? Hmm, I can try. It turns out I had a special ability that would allow me to reach into door locks and trigger the mechanism, even without a key. The door was now unlocked. On days 11 to 12, Eddie opened the door and we immediately had to hide. There were a bunch of scientists around what looked like big tanks full of green liquid. Eddie ducked behind one, fast. Phew, I hope nobody saw us. What is this green stuff? I have no idea. Eddie peeked over the tank. The scientists were listening as one scientist spoke. The scientist speaking had spiky red hair and looked like he was in charge. I'm gonna try and get closer so that I can hear him. Eddie snuck us toward another tank, one nearly behind the spiky-haired scientist. And we couldn't have done this without all of your help. Now that the machine is fully functional, we can do what we intended. Start the zombie apocalypse. What? What are you doing, Eddie? They are going to find us. Eddie peeked over the tank again. The scientists were looking around, trying to find the source of the noise. You sure did it now, Eddie. Come on, we gotta get out of here. We looked up to see the lead scientist pointing a weapon at us. I could tell that Eddie was scared, so I started to take form. But then, the scientist fired the weapon, and we blacked out. On days 13 to 15, Eddie and I woke up, strapped down on a table. Hey, let me out. We looked around the room. There were cages, weird instruments, and glass windows looking in on us. Well, what are we gonna do, then? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe escape? And with that, I sliced the belts that were tying us down, so Eddie was able to get up. You could have gotten us out this whole time? Yes, it was just fun watching you squirm. Eddie sighed and walked to the door. He pulled it, and it opened right up. Not very good security here, huh? He started to creep down the hall. Just then, the lead scientist came around the corner. We hid behind some boxes as he passed. He went back into the lab, and we heard him yell. Who let my test subject out? We were still hiding behind the boxes. I did notice that he had a syringe in his hand with the same green stuff from the large room. We gotta get some more information out of him, Venom. Sure. Thing. I took my venom form, and we started to run toward the scientist. He screamed and ran into the room we were being held in. He sealed the door behind him and watched us through the glass. What? are you? We are Venom, and we know your plan, funny-haired man. The scientist scrambled around and pressed a big red button on the side of the wall. Something really loud started shrieking. Oh, turn it off! I could feel my Venom form fading away, and we turned back into regular Eddie. Eddie started to look woozy and collapsed on the floor. On days 16 to 19, we woke up strapped to the table. Again! Venom? What was that? Noise. I don't like loud noises. We had a terrible headache, and we could barely make out anything in the room. It was like our view was all fuzzy. When everything started to clear up, we saw the scientist again. He was standing on the other side of the room, looking at us through the glass. Extraordinary. I tried to cut the straps, but the scientist held up a device. If you change again, I'll turn on the alarm and I'd rather keep you in one piece for now. I let Eddie take control. Who are you? Dr. Drake. I am researching life expansion, and I have finally reached a breakthrough. He pulled out the syringe with the green goo. In order for life to expand, it first needs to be controlled. It needs to have the best chance. So I started the zombie apocalypse. Survival of the fittest, you might say. Only the strongest should remain. Otherwise, the Earth's resources will be used up by the weak, and it's irreversible, so no chance of stopping me. He put the syringe away. He stepped up to a board and pressed some buttons. A huge device lowered down and looked like it was going to envelop us. What is that? Don't you worry. It will only hurt a little. My first test subject worked well, but apparently he was eaten? His tracker gave off information that it was swallowed. Sorry. But no matter, you're exactly what I need. I already have four attacks planned, but you are a welcome surprise. With you and the bombs, this city will be cleaned up in no time. 
The device lowered and was getting even closer to us. Um, I don't like this, Eddie. Me neither. The device started to get closer, and then I noticed something about it. There was a tube running really close to our hand. Maybe that could stop the machine. Hit it, Venom. I morphed out of Eddie's hand and pulled the tube. The whole device collapsed and smoke went up everywhere. Run! I took my Venom form and we were able to break the glass. I knocked over the scientist. He dropped his syringe and the small alarm device in the struggle. Pick those up! Okay! I grabbed them and we ran down the hallway. On days 20 to 22, we escaped. Barely. We ran down several hallways and finally broke through a window to get out. Wow, that was amazing! Amazing? We nearly died, Venom. Oh, we're fine. We climbed up the wall to the apartment and made our way inside. I let Eddie take form. He examined the device and the syringe. We need to tell people about this. Everyone is in danger. He started to move, but I didn't let him. Venom, come on. We gotta go warn everyone. But I'm hungry. Eddie sighed and started to go to the fridge. No, I want meat. Like that zombie. Oh, that was so gross. Maybe I can eat more zombies. Eddie stopped and thought for a minute. Venom, we need to help people first. If worst comes to worst, we can eat the zombies. But we need to tell someone official. Okay, how about that Ann girl? I like her. Actually, that's a good idea. We might need some help. But then we talk to the authorities here in town. Okay. Eddie went to his phone and dialed Ann's number. While he was waiting, he tossed something on the ground. What's that? It's chocolate, Venom. It sounded gross. Symbiotes don't want chocolate. They want meat. Eddie picked up and ate the chocolate, and I felt myself get stronger. Ooh, yes. More of that. Eddie ate another and another, and I felt myself growing. That's when I took my Venom form once again, but this time I was even bigger. I felt stronger and had more hearts. My hunger meter grew too. Hello? I forgot that Ann was on the phone. Hello, this is Venom. Meet us at the small, messy place where we sleep. On days 23 to 26, we decided to make some upgrades to the apartment. I was helping build a secret door when Ann knocked on the door. I opened it up. Hello? Nobody was there. Wrong door, buddy. Oh, right. I went to the front door and there was Ann. I let Eddie take form. Hey, Ann, come in. He talked for a minute about boring things, and then I said something. Eddie, tell her about the zombies and all the ones I'm going to eat. Right, yeah. Yes. Eddie told Anne about all the stuff we saw at the lab. He also told her about the safe house we were building. This is all great, Eddie. And Venom. I like her. Stop it. What? Nothing. You were saying? We need to go to the police. They can help us. We nodded and we went with Anne down to the police station. We told them about Dr. Drake and his plan to unleash the zombie apocalypse. They laughed and told us to go home. So we made our way back to the apartment. Rude. What about your boss, Eddie? You're a reporter. Maybe he will print a story about it. Eddie nodded his head and called his boss. He told him about the zombies and how everyone needed to be warned. Eddie, you really expect me to believe that? It's the truth. Look, I can't keep dealing with you and your crazy stories. You're fired, Eddie. Eddie sunk into the couch and sighed. Oh, I know what will cheer you up. Let's eat some chocolate. Eddie only sighed. <sighs> On days 27 to 31, Anne offered to help us build our safe house. We gathered more brick and stone from abandoned buildings and made the secret safe house look just like the rest of the building. We found some extra beds and other furniture, too. This looks great, Eddie. Uh, what about me? And Venom, too. I was really proud of our work. It was small, but maybe we could upgrade it in the future. Hey, Venom, we should build something else. Something that will let people know that this is a safe place to come when things get difficult. Eddie and I agreed that we want to build a statue of you. I was a little shocked. Eddie let me take form. Me? Why? Well, you saved my life. Life. And I know Eddie is really grateful that you saved him. Are you really grateful, Eddie? Yeah, yeah, sure. You're kind of our hero. Huh? Hero? I hadn't thought about that before, but it made sense. These humans were very frail and small. I was big and strong. Then I realized something. Am I the only one who can stop the zombies? And not it. We're counting on you, Venom. You're our only hope. That felt good. I liked that feeling. Okay, Anne? I will stop those zombies and make sure you puny humans don't die. Anne laughed. Sounds good to me. On days 32 to 35, Eddie and I went back to the lab, but I insisted on eating some more chocolate before we left. I would also make sure he stocked up on some more in our safe house, just in case. We knew Dr. Drake wanted to start the apocalypse. We just didn't know when or how. We needed to stay a few steps ahead of it if we could. On our way over, we didn't see anything out of the ordinary, except some interesting graffiti on the wall. What an odd thing to write. When we arrived, we could see the window we jumped out of. It was still broken. Should we go in through there again? I crawled up the side of the building to another window. I didn't see anything inside. The green tanks were empty, and there was no one in sight. That's not good. I climbed to the very top of the building to get a good view of the city. All of a sudden, I heard a loud boom, and a large plume of smoke went up in the air. Oh uh, no, I think we're too late. We started to run across the buildings toward the large green cloud. As we got closer, we noticed that there was a lot of green goo everywhere. And there were zombies. They were running after normal humans and attacking them. We had to do something. All right, Venom, do your thing. I licked my lips and jumped down into the crowd. On days 36 to 39, I defeated and ate a lot of zombies. Maybe hundreds. I had never felt so full in my life. After eating one, I felt a surge of strength and I morphed into an even bigger Venom. I was even taller and my tongue got longer and I could use that as a new attack. I realized I couldn't keep eating because I was getting too full. So I started to fence off one city block so the zombies wouldn't get out. The humans were safe and I basically had an endless supply of food. Venom, 
We should go check on Anne. See if she's okay. Good idea, Eddie. I like her. Me too, buddy. Me too. We made our way back to the apartment to check on Anne. I let Eddie take his human form since I was getting a little bit big for the ceilings. And We looked around and didn't see her anywhere. We checked the safe house. Maybe she went to get more chocolate. Venom, we have enough chocolate to last you a lifetime. Mm, mm, not possible. She wasn't in the safe house either. Where would she have gone? But then we heard another boom and there was an explosion just down the street. Eddie looked out the window. It was more green smoke. Oh no. It was time for me to take my Venom form again and we went racing outside to go help. On days 40 to 43, we found the explosion site. There was green goo everywhere and people were turning into zombies again. We need to start fencing them in, just like the others. We started to take materials from the destroyed buildings and build a wall around the infected. Eventually, we got all of them inside. Eddie, there's Anne. I pointed to the top of a building nearby. She was looking around frantically. Anne! We raced up the side of the building and grabbed her. We ran her all the way back to the apartment building before letting her go. I let Eddie take form. What were you doing outside? I have some friends who live nearby and I was in their building when I heard the explosion. I went to the roof of the building, hoping it would be a safe place. My friends went downstairs. I don't think they made it. I'm so sorry, Anne, but I'm glad you're safe. We are glad you're safe. Just please, don't go outside again. She nodded, but she looked pretty sad. Hey. Venom will take care of us, okay? I let my true Venom form come out. Of course I will. Who do you think I am? That made Anne laugh and she tried to embrace me. What a funny human. Thank you. What can I do to help? I let Eddie take control again. There must be a pattern to the attacks. He mentioned that he had planned four. We need a map so we can figure out where Dr. Drake is going to strike next. Anne nodded and pulled out a map from the bookshelf. We looked at the areas of the city and it didn't look like much yet. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, how about we work on that statue so people know where to go? Great idea. We started to build a statue on top of the safe house. We only got the first little bit done, but I'm excited to see how it turns out. On days 44 to 49, we went back outside to scout the city. At this point, most people knew to stay inside. Some still went about their business though, like nothing was happening. Eddie said that the mayor told everyone that everything was under control and they had nothing to worry about. I felt so proud of myself, but also worried. There were so many people in the city. People like Anne and Eddie. I really liked them and I didn't want people like them to turn into zombies. It wasn't fair of Dr. Drake to decide who would live in his weird world. He needed to be stopped at all costs. Eddie, where do you think Dr. Drake is? Well, if he wants to stop the zombie apocalypse, he's probably hiding in a safe house like ours, but probably with more security and food. Do you think he has a chocolate stash? Bet he does, buddy. That made me like him even less. How dare he take chocolate that should be mine? We jumped around on some buildings to look around, but there didn't seem to be anything. There is always an explosion of goop, so he must put it there before it goes off. Did you see any sort of container at the other sites? I don't know. Let's go see. I need a snack anyway. We headed over to the second explosion site where we had built the zombie fence. I noticed there was some sort of weird shaped thing on the ground. What is that? We picked it up but we couldn't tell what it was. Maybe a bolt or something? We took it with us back to the apartment. On days 50 to 53, we found Anne in the apartment with a few other people. I let Eddie take his human so we wouldn't scare everyone. These people live downstairs, but they said the owner of this building disappeared. They didn't feel safe in their apartment, so they came up here. The owner is gone? Well, what if we just retrofitted the entire apartment to be a safe house? That way you can still live in your home. That would be perfect, thank you. I'm Anita, by the way. Let me know if you need any help with anything. Of course, we could use some help with securing the block. Anita nodded and started to gather some people to help her outside. Anne, Eddie, and I got to work building some new security measures for the surrounding buildings. We cleared out some of the other debris from the broken buildings and made ourselves a large wall surrounding us. We also started to work more on the statue. It was starting to look really good. It felt good to know that we were protecting people. Thanks again for taking us in. You're amazing. Of course. Anything we can do to help. Anita nodded and her and her friends went back downstairs. Once we were done, Anne, Eddie, and I sat around the safe house table looking at the weird object we had found. We had put it in a container and didn't let Anne touch it, just in case. Wait, I know what that is. It's the top of a fire hydrant. Are you kidding? Those are everywhere. How are we supposed to know which one is real and which one is a trap? But our conversation was interrupted when we heard a loud explosion. It didn't seem as close this time, but it still made me mad. How dare Dr. Drake hurt all these people? Eddie let me take the venom form, and we went sprinting toward the green plume of smoke. On days 54 to 57, we arrived at a city block close to the waterfront. People were groaning and already turning into zombies. There weren't as many zombies this time, but it still made me mad. Hey, Venom. Are you okay? No! Why would a fellow human hurt other humans? There are a lot of good humans here. Some are bad and should be eaten, but mostly they are good like you and Anne. Drake needs to be stopped. You're starting to sound like a human. That's good. At first I thought you were just this parasite that was going to eat me and everyone here. You're actually better than most people I know. That made me feel only a little bit better. Well, actually it made me feel pretty good. It was nice to feel needed. Venom, are you crying? No, we are crying. It's okay, buddy. It's all good. We saw an emergency flare go up in the sky. Hey, 
That's a flare from our emergency stash. The people in our building must be in trouble. We ran toward the source of the explosion to see what was going on. On days 58 to 62, we arrived back at the apartment. Everything seemed normal and nobody seemed to know who shot off the flare. But then, Anita came running up to us. Eddie, you won't believe it. Anna's a traitor. What? She was acting really weird, so I followed her up onto the roof. She told me that she was a spy for Dr. Drake and had staked out the apartment for him. She's been trying to get to you so she can turn you into Drake. I couldn't believe it. Anna was our friend. How could she betray us like this? Where did she go? I don't know. She must have gone down the fire escape. I tried to grab her, but she let off the flare, and it scared me so bad that I fell over. I think she was telling Drake where we are. Everyone started to freak out. Hey, everyone, calm down. We will take care of this. Don't worry. Anita seemed really shaken. I felt the same way. I still couldn't believe that Anne was gone, plotting with Dr. Drake. She was probably in on it the whole time. She pretended to be attacked by a zombie so someone would help her. Drake wanted test subjects, but now he just wanted me. He would do anything to get to me. I felt so angry at him, but I also felt sad about Anne. I liked her. Me too, buddy. Me too. We decided to keep lookout for the night. I also checked all the fire hydrants in our block. They all seemed real, so I felt good about our safety. I still felt sad, but I knew that I needed to protect our friends. If Drake was coming, I'd be there to meet him. On day 63 to 66, Dr. Drake didn't come. We were expecting him to, but he never did. We waited and waited. Everyone seemed on edge. Eddie, most of all. Why hasn't he come yet? What is he waiting for? I didn't know, but I had a weird feeling about this whole situation. Or maybe it was hunger. I couldn't tell. Venom, what should we do? Eat chocolate. I'm serious. So am I. Eddie threw up his hands in frustration. Eddie, I know this must be hard for you too. He nodded. Are you crying? No. We are crying. On days 67 to 70, we went into the safe house to rustle up some chocolate. Well in there, we noticed the map that Anne had taken out. She had plotted the attack sites in red marker. Venom, look at that. I know, Eddie. I see through your eyes. The three points were marked equal distance from each other. Then Anne had plotted the next spot with a bright yellow marker. Anne figured it out. Wait, why would she plot this out if she was a traitor? Maybe she left it here on accident? She already knew where the attack points were. No, Anne is smarter than that. Then it dawned on us. Anita! She must be the traitor. But if that's the case, where's Anne? We decided to go up to the roof to investigate. Anita must have been wanting to contact Drake, and Anne was onto her. Anne followed her up here with the flare gun as a precaution, and she confronted Anita. Anita is not good people. No, she's not, buddy. Anne must have set off the flare, and Anita had to come up with a story to keep her cover. So, where's Anne? Anita must be hiding her. Then we heard some noise coming from the rooftop storage closet. We took on my venom form and approached the door. I opened it, my claws bared, ready to fight. Anne! On day 71 to 74, we untied Anne and helped her out of the storage closet. I'm so happy you found me. But Eddie, Venom, we need to stop Anita. She's a traitor. We know. We saw your map. You are the smartest human and wouldn't leave that if you were a traitor. You're not too bad yourself, Venom. I let Eddie take his form again. And Eddie, of course. Well, we are Venom. So I just assume everything good you have to say applies to me too. Well, I'm glad you found me. Anita was on the phone with Drake when I grabbed her. I managed to get her phone and throw it off the building before shooting the flare gun. Well, nothing has happened, so Anita must not have contacted Drake yet. We need to make sure she doesn't, otherwise lots of people will be in danger. We headed downstairs to Anita's apartment. When she opened the door, she looked terrified. Anita, we need to talk to you. She tried to run inside and shut the door, but Eddie let the venom form come out and we rushed inside. Anita, you hurt Anne! I didn't have a choice. Drake has my family. Wait, what? Drake somehow found where you lived, and he knew I lived in the same building, so he's been using me to get information about the safe house. And you what have you told him? Nothing. Anne threw my phone off the building before I had a chance to say anything. I couldn't get a new one because the city is basically on lockdown. Please, he probably thinks I've betrayed him. He has my family. She started to cry. Eddie wanted to take his human form again, but I wanted to talk to her some more. We will get your family back, Anita. They are important to you, so they are important to us. I patted her on the back. Do you know where he keeps his chocolate? What? Sorry, do you know where his safe house is? No. But we know where he is attacking next. Do you know when that will be? All he said is that he needed to wait. He had to make some modifications or something. We sat and thought for a bit, but we had no idea what Drake could be planning. We decided to help Anita get a new phone so she could contact Drake. She told him that she needed some more time since we were making more improvements to the block. He seemed to buy it. For now. That should stall him for a bit, but we will find your family, Anita. We promise. On day 75 to 78, Anita apologized to Anne and they started working together again. Anita helped us to finish the statue as well. We thought it looked pretty awesome and hoped that it would be a beacon of hope for people. We also crafted some weapons and gear for the people in the block. We had no idea what was coming, but we wanted to be prepared. Everyone seemed a little happier and hopeful. We welcomed more people into our safe perimeter and they even gave me chocolate as a gift. Wow, we will never run out of chocolate. We also went around the city to check on the zombie corals where they are fenced in. People need to be able to get to their homes and shops. We got to work making a large zombie pen on a small island just by a pier. We slowly started transporting the zombies over there. We also cleaned up the 
you and help the people living nearby. It was good to be a hero. On day 79 to 84, we scouted the block where the next explosion should be. We checked all the fire hydrants and they all seemed normal. Weird. Maybe he hasn't put it in here yet. We took shelter on a nearby roof and staked out the block. A lot of time passed and nothing happened. What in the world? I was starting to get suspicious. We knew where he was going to be. Why wasn't he here? It didn't make sense. Wait, Anita said he was making modifications. What if it's not a fire hydrant? What if it's... I saw it. I hurried and ran down the building toward the car. It was green, just like the goo. But before I could reach it, the car exploded. On days 85 to 89, a giant explosion made the block rumble. The buildings were damaged and there was a large crater full of green goo. There weren't any people outside, so there weren't any zombies to worry about. But we needed to clean up this goo before it would start to infect people. I guess that Drake just wanted a bigger explosion this time. We managed to clean up all of the goo before checking out the pieces of the car. But there was hardly anything left, just a crater. Wait, look! There was a very small trail of green goo leading away from the explosion site. Maybe the car was driven here. It left a trail. Great job, Venom! We followed the trail, cleaning it up as we went. It led out to a pier, and then stopped. Do cars drive on water? No, they don't, buddy. He must have taken a boat. We looked around, but didn't see any more signs of green goo. The boat could have come from anywhere. We will find him, Eddie. We will find Dr. Drake and make sure he doesn't blow up anything else. I know. It'll just take a little more time. On days 90 to 94, we went back to the safe house to regroup and look at the map. and pointed out a few different islands that were nearby, as well as the prison. I doubt he would be at the prison, but he might be on this island. It has some abandoned buildings there. It looked like our best bet, but we wanted to prep and make sure we had everything we needed before heading over there. And he grabbed the syringe we had taken, as well as some chocolate bars. Oh yes, those are most important. We also helped people find apartments to stay in. I let Eddie take his human form to talk to everyone. Thank you for all your support and help. We think we have found where Dr. Drake is staying, and we're going to make sure all of this ends soon. We will restore the city and make sure nothing like this happens again. People clapped and cheered, and one called out my name. Venom, you're our hero, Venom! And the crowd started chanting my name. Eddie let me take my Venom form, and the crowd cheered even louder. We are Venom! On days 95 to 97, we said goodbye to Anne. Are you sure you'll be okay? Do you want me to come with you? We'll be fine, but we can't risk anyone else coming. No one is immune like us. Anne nodded, but she looked sad. Hey, we'll be okay. We promise. She nodded her head and looked down, but then Eddie gave her a hug. You take care of each other, okay, Venom? I took my Venom form and told her, yes, we will take care. I gave Anne a grin, and then we took off. It was time to stop that scientist. On day 98, we headed for the island. We swam under the pier and made our way across the muddy terrain. It was foggy, but we managed to muddle our way to what looked like an old hospital. It had some large graffiti on the side of the building. Creepy. You got that right. We found an open window and leapt through, trying not to make much sound. It seemed quiet. Wait, listen. It sounded like someone was yelling upstairs somewhere. We made our way through the corridors and up the stairs. The noise was getting louder, so we knew we were in the right place. We opened the door and saw a long hallway with rooms on both sides. But then, a bunch of zombies came running out from around the corner. I started fighting the zombies and managed to take a few down. Other zombies tried to attack me, but it hardly did anything. After only a few moments, all the zombies were gone. I'll bet there's more coming. I hope so. I was enjoying the fighting. We continued down the hallway and saw some double doors leading into a large open room. There were tanks filled with green goo and Dr. Drake standing in the middle of them. He didn't seem to notice us, so we ducked behind a tank. He looked like he was experimenting on some people. We looked around again and noticed there were cells with people inside. And his family must be in here somewhere. We will free them, Eddie. But first, we need to deal with Drake. Agreed. We crept forward and managed to leap toward Drake. Before we knew it, he had pressed a button and some alarm started blaring. Turn it off! Oh, look who it is. It's Venom, the hero. Dr. Drake turned off the alarm for a moment. I felt so weak, so I let Eddie take his human form. Not so strong without your parasite, are you, Mr. Brock? Let these people go, Drake. Drake hit Eddie and laughed. No, you see, everything is going very well. I realized I couldn't infect you. So the most I could do is kill you. Turns out the exploding car didn't quite do it. That was the modification that Anita was talking about. No matter. I don't need you anymore. You're just a liability now. Soon, I'll be able to open your little compound and infect all the people there. I have someone on the inside. No, you don't. Anita told us everything. She isn't going to help you. Drake yelled and hit Eddie again. She will, if I tell her that her family is going to die if she doesn't. Drake pointed to some people in a cell nearby. They were trembling and looked so scared. I needed to help them. I thought of Anne, Anita, and especially Eddie. They all needed me, and I couldn't let them down. I mustered all my strength and took my final form. No! I transformed into the biggest possible version of Venom. I was huge, with tons of hearts, and I could feel I was stronger than ever. On day 99, I charged towards Drake, but he had one last trick up his sleeve. He ran back into an emergency pod and sealed the door shut. It started to rumble 
and I thought he might have an ejection pod. But to my surprise, the rumbling stopped. I saw now that the door he was sealed behind was only part of a much larger door. The large door slid open, and a gigantic robot walked out, piloted by Dr. Drake. The fight was on. Dr. Drake and I started to fight, and it was a good thing I had gained all those extra hearts, because he started to take them away quickly. I was strong, but his robot suit was so powerful, I worried I wouldn't be able to defeat him before he took away all of my life. But then I saw something strange in the room he had come out of, a glowing device of some kind. I couldn't get past him, though. The huge robot suit was blocking me on the entrance into the room, and he refused to move away from it far enough to let me pass. But then I had an idea. Your turn, Eddie. I changed my form back to the human, and much smaller Eddie. Eddie knew what to do and ran right under the robot's leg into the room. I saw now that the glowing machine was the source of the robot's power. No, don't touch that. I turned back into Venom. Sorry, Drake. Looks like your robot suit's time has expired. I broke the machine and heard Dr. Drake scream as his robot suit exploded. I saw the doctor standing in the scraps of his robot suit. I cornered him and then pulled out the syringe that Eddie had stolen from the lab all those days ago. Have a taste of your own medicine, doctor. I plunged the syringe into Drake and he started to scream. He backed up and began to change. His skin turned green as his cries turned into moans. Soon, he was a zombie, but still with that trademark red hair, of course. I licked my lips. Snack time! Soon, I was enjoying another zombie meat treat. Everyone in the cages clapped and cheered me on. We let them out, and I went searching for my well-earned chocolate stash before heading home. On day 100, we made it back to the apartment, safe and sound. Anita reunited with her family, and we saw Anne again. She made us the biggest chocolate cake ever, which was followed by an even bigger hub. Eddie even got his job as a reporter back. We helped clean up the entire city, the green goo tanks, and everything went back to the way it was. Better, even. If you want to know what adventure we go on next, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for your support.